Didn't you just leave it be? Let... Let me go. Why are you doing this to me? You and the Baroness. Dr. Gebhardt, I don't know. Don't you understand what you are forcing me to do? You... You don't have to. It is almost over. You won't feel a thing. I am sorry you have to see all this. I should have used more chloroform.
Thanks. A wet towel works miracles. I told you so. Out with it then. What were you doing down there? Inspector, at least let the constable recover his breath. He almost killed himself. Me? No. Dr. Gebhardt would have taken care of that for me. Where is he? Gebhardt? He's vanished without a trace. We're searching the ship from top to bottom. One at a time. Tell me, Zellner, what did you find out? Dr. Gebhardt killed Baroness von Trebitz. Impossible. Do you have proof? Besides the fact that he wanted to kill me? But wasn't the doctor with you when the shot was fired? The shot that we heard was a recording. The Baroness had a tape recorder and good speakers in her cabin. Good enough to make the noise audible on the upper deck. Is that just your suspicion? Or do you have proof? There's an audio tape in the medical center. The reel belongs to the tape player in the Baroness's cabin. And there's a Seibling reel in her cabin that belongs to the recorder in the medical center. Ugh. After a few minutes, there's a loud bang on the audio tape. That's our gunshot. Where did Gebhardt get it from? He recorded it in the cargo hold. His tape recorder has a microphone, and I removed a bullet from one of the boxes down there. And it came from the murder weapon? Yes. I compared it to the other bullet in the inspector's cabin. Of course you did. All right. Uh, uh, Inspector Legrand! Let's pretend you're onto something. The shot we heard was just a recording. What happened next? We all ran to the Baroness's cabin. She lay comatose in a pool of blood. Dr. Gebhardt pushed past you so that you couldn't get too close to the Baroness. He examined her and pronounced her dead. There was no reason for us to doubt him. The shot, the blood, the Baroness lying there lifelessly. But she was only unconscious. Knocked out by the chloral hydrate that the doctor had poured into her glass shortly before. The doctor had a glass in his hand when you came in. He wanted to remove the evidence, but you gave me the glass instead, Captain De Conti, and unintentionally knocked me out as well. Nonsense. There was blood everywhere. And the Baroness is certainly dead enough, isn't she? Then who did shoot her? And when? As I already said, it was Dr. Gebhardt. He shot the sleeping Baroness in her cabin, barely ten meters away from us. What are you saying? The doctor was alone in the cabin for a while. When the alarm went off, it was deafening. I couldn't even hear myself. And I found a pillow with burn marks. Could have been used to muffle a gunshot. And the blood? The blood wasn't real. Dr. Gebhardt mixed up a liquid that looked like fresh blood to the casual observer, but the liquid remained red instead of becoming darker and browner from exposure to the air. That meant he had to clean the body and get rid of the bedding. But the blood was already there when we first entered the cabin. Dr. Gebhardt was in the Baroness's cabin before the murder. He hid a surgical glove full of the red liquid under her sheet. The Baroness, dead tired, fell onto her bed, the glove burst, and the blood spread across the bed. I found the burst glove in the medical center. But why did he do it? What was his motive? Uh, Inspector? I can only speculate. The Baroness spent the day rummaging through her old family photos. And in her diary, she wrote about deceased family members. I suspect it had something to do with their fates during the war. The Baroness wrote a warning on her notepad. There is a murderer on board. I don't have proof, but I believe that the Baroness held Dr. Gebhardt responsible for the deaths of her relatives and wanted to confront him in front of all of us. 
The doctor couldn't allow that to happen, and so he silenced her. No, no, no. Do you have anything to contribute, Constable? Uh, uh confession, sir. Dr. Gebhardt was the raven. It's all here. He admits to everything. What does it say? It says, Do you still remember, my dear Nico? The streets were wet with rain and the scent of roasted barley and fermenting yeast wafted over to us from the brewery. The dog barked until your shot struck down the innocent one. After that silence, not a single sound except for my soft steps fading on the wet cobblestone street. They made a hero of you, and I, at last, found peace. At least, until the urge returned. Some of us are not made for retirement, my friend. I thought they would assign this case to you, and that thought pleased me. We'd finally find out who was truly the better man. And it pains me now to have to admit that you and your little gumshoe got the better of me. You drove me into a corner forced me to make mistakes. I congratulate you on your triumph, but no one will confine the raven to a cage. There is but one way out, and that is by my own hand. Farewell, Raven Hunter, R. Inspector Legrand. Inspector? I was right. I told them all, over and over again. But no one would listen. You think that Dr. Gebhardt was really the raven? The things Gebhardt describes in his letter aren't part of any police report. Only someone who was there would know them. Couldn't there have been others involved? One of the police, for instance. What if one of them changed sides? Why is it so hard for you to accept the simple truth? There was never a new raven. There was only ever the old one. And that was Dr. Gebhardt. The modus operandi doesn't match. The raven was not a killer. Legends are rarely what they seem to be, Constable Zelma. Then who was the man who was killed back then? William Jackson, a petty thief. Committed some burglaries together with his brother. Talented, but not world class. And they thought he was the Raven. Some people thought it was part of his disguise. If you're a debonair master thief, what better disguise than pretending to be a common crook? From time to time you let them catch you, pulling small jobs, and no one ever imagines you're capable of a major heist. But you didn't believe it. I had my doubts. But everyone congratulated me, and those doubts were pushed aside. It was like being caught in a storm. But eventually the storm passed, and my doubts were still there. But not this time? No doubts telling you that Geb Hart isn't our man? It must be him. What about the handwriting, the wording? Does the farewell letter match the Raven's other letters? Yes, it's his handwriting, his words. I've read all the Raven's letters, all of them, over and over again. I never thought it was possible. A resurrected Raven. The Raven was never dead. I shot the wrong man. But that man had the stolen goods, didn't he? So he must have been in league with the Raven. One could hardly call him innocent. Where do we go from here? We deliver the eye and then I'll contact Perry. A task force will compare all of Gephardt's known residences with the Raven's activity. And if there are any inconsistencies? You're welcome to keep an eye on the safe if you can't let it go. The ship will remain in Cairo for one day. That's all the time you'll have to catch your own Raven. I already have mine. Uh, 
Ah, you're one of Legrand's men, aren't you? My name is Anton Jakob Zellner. You've come just in time. Grace, my dachshund is missing. There may be more important matters for me to attend to, Mr... Director Abbas Mohtar. And Grace isn't just a common dog. She's a purebred German dachshund, a champion. So, the exhibition will still open tonight. But of course. Everything has been arranged. The final preparations are almost complete. But one of the two exhibits won't be there. A terrible loss. A tragedy. That irreplaceable Egyptian cultural treasure has been stolen for the second time. The second time? What? Did you really believe that the Eye of the Sphinx was found lying on the banks of the Thames? Inspector Legrand, Professor Lucien, and Constable Oliver are overseeing the transportation of the safe. They should be here at any moment. I'll have a look around in the meantime. Do you think that's necessary? The Raven is dead, after all. If you mean Dr. Gebhardt, his body was never recovered. Nor the stolen Eye of the Sphinx, for that matter. It does us a great honor that the Inspector is concerned about us. But we have everything under control. Legrand isn't as concerned as he should be. But I am. Is the museum closed? Yes. Only carefully selected guests may enter the museum during preparations for the gala. And of course, you're one of them. Mr. Uh, Constable. What can you tell me about the museum's security system? One of the best on the market. And the second eye will still be exhibited in our special treasure chamber, which is extra secure. Treasure chamber? See for yourself, to the right of the entrance. The eye is a safe as the British Crown Jewels. I think I'll have a look around the museum. Please do. There's a lot to see. And you let me know if you see Grace, won't you? I hope we find her before the great inspector arrives. Isn't it fantastic how he solved the murder on the ship? Le Grand? Of course. It's in all the newspapers. The murder of the wealthy Baroness von Trebitz, and how the great Inspector Legrand identified the murderer in just one day. It's the stuff legends are made of. You should count yourself lucky to have the chance to learn from him. What... what exactly do the newspapers say? Everything. It's fantastic. Someone on board must have informed the press immediately. Of course, it's a great advertising for us. The reporters will queue up tonight. And it was reported that Legrand found the murderer. Of course! Who else? Well, I wasn't exactly uninvolved. Of course. Legrand surely has assistance. But honor to he who deserves to be honored. Right? Well then. Be seeing you, Constable. Grace! Here, Gracie. Oh, my sweetheart, where are you? Oh, uh, Mr. Inch. Mr. Inch, there you are. I am so sorry. Baroness von Trebitz was a good-hearted woman. She did so much for the museum. As you say, sir. And you? Are you leaving so soon? I'd like to go back to my hotel. These last days have been such a strain. First, you sneak into the museum without greeting me, and then you want to leave just as quickly? I didn't want to disturb you, and we'll have time enough tonight. Yes, you simply must come tonight. I wanted to present Baroness von Trebitz with a medal. Now you'll have to accept it. Of course, if you insist, sir. The Baroness paid for all this. Without her, there wouldn't have been an exhibition or a gala. She was very generous. Yes, she was. I if you'll excuse me now. Constable Zellner, I want to thank you again for all you've done. You 
saved me, you could say. My pleasure. See you tonight. It seems like Anton Jakob Zellner will never manage to get on the front page. The museum director and the rest of the world think that Legrand is the one who put a stop to Dr. Gebhardt. I'll stay here until Legrand and the others arrive. I can use the time to take a look around. Locked. The door is closed if the guard room isn't occupied. That makes sense. Though I would have expected the guard room to be occupied all the time, especially on a day like today. Miss Miller. I'm glad to see you here. Oh, Constable Zellner. I heard what happened to you on board. Awful. Truly awful. All's well that ends well. You are waiting for Professor Lucien? Mm hmm Tomorrow, you'll be sailing down the Nile, if I heard correctly. That's right. I'm sure it will be an amazing experience. But you don't seem to be very excited. Oh, but I am. It's very generous of Lady Westmacott to invite me, and especially Maddie. He'll learn a lot. But? Well, Professor Lucien offered to join us. Then Matt will learn even more. And I'm sure it won't be unpleasant for you, either. No, I... I just don't know how Maddie would react if Edgar came with us. I understand. I could test the water to see how he'd feel about it. Would you do that? Oh, thank you, Constable Zellner. Were you able to find out why Professor Lucien left the forecastle so suddenly last night? No, not really. We only had a brief conversation. He was still very nervous. He was like that on the train as well. Seems to be typical of him. It must be something to do with the burglary at the museum. It really affected him. But he told me not to worry about anything. He said, soon this would all be over. Really? How did he mean that? Oh, I... I didn't ask him, Constable. Are there other passengers from the ship here? Oh, yes, we arrived as a group. David Kreutzer, the violinist, was with us. So were Miss Myers and Mr. Inch. He seems to have gotten over the death of the Baroness pretty quickly. He seems positively relaxed. I've met him. He looks on the bright side of life, so to speak. Where is Mr. Kreutzer? He's over in the treasure chamber. Maddie is downstairs in the main hall. I'm afraid I'll hear the sound of something priceless shattering any second. Matt will be careful, Miss Miller. I'll continue my tour of the museum. Oh, yes, there's so much to see. I can't tell whether Miss Miller and Professor Lucien will be happy together. I hope so, though. 